First, the Aussies putting their hands up to be human guinea pigs in the race for a COVID-19 vaccine. And it's risky. These human challenge trials involve being infected with the virus. Dan Nolan spoke to some who've signed up. I want to get the vaccine and then I want to be exposed to COVID. I'm ready to be a human guinea pig. There's no doubt there's a level of risk for any participant in a human challenge trial with COVID-19. And this is the main reason I've signed up to do these challenge trials because we just can't keep doing this. We can't be waiting two years, five years, ten years for a vaccine to be ready. Christian Wynn, lawyer, husband, father and now COVID vaccine crusader potentially putting his own life on the line for billions of others. I know what I'm getting myself into. I am happy to put my hand up um, and I want to be one of the first ones through the gate. Tonight, why this 28-year-old is joining tens of thousands of people around the world signing up to be deliberately exposed to COVID-19. You, know, you take a little bit of risk. Um, but potentially you're helping a lot of people in a life and death situation. It could be one of the most selfless things a person can do, essentially handing your body over to science. But in this case, Christian says it's a no-brainer. You know, kidney donation is making one person's life a lot better, and I'd be happy to do that. Bringing a vaccine forward is potentially affecting the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, um, and I'm definitely happy to do that. He's one of more than 35,000 people from 160 countries who've put up their hand to take part in human challenge trials for a coronavirus vaccine through advocacy group One Day Sooner. It involves being deliberately infected with the disease in the hope of speeding up a successful vaccine. I might get sick, there's even a risk there that I might get really sick. Uh, but that risk compared with the reward of potentially bringing a vaccine um, to people sooner, I, I, I don't think there's really any comparison there. The Human Challenge trial primarily recruits healthy people aged 20 to 29. They are put in medical isolation and given the coronavirus vaccine candidate. Two weeks later, or once antibodies are found in the participant's blood, they are given a controlled live dose of COVID-19. They're then monitored in lab facilities around the clock for any signs of illness for up to six weeks. From there, results are handed over to health authorities to consider the vaccine for approval. But the whole time you are under constant medical supervision, you're in a quarantine facility, um, you know, you can't, you can't go anywhere or do anything. You've got doctors watching you constantly. Professional dancer Callum Guga has lost his job in this pandemic and is living through Melbourne's strict stage four lockdowns. I'm outside for my designated one hour freedom that we get here in Melbourne. It got the 25 year old thinking about what he could do to make a difference in the global crisis. It's a way to give back. I feel very useless not being able to do anything here. So it'd be nice to just sort of do something for everyone else for once. How do you feel about the possibility of being infected with COVID-19? Um, as of now, I'm very fit and healthy. So I think I've got the best chance of not getting sick. You're banking on the vaccine actually working and you don't get sick at all. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. The aim is to fast track a coronavirus vaccine. Unlike conventional vaccine trials that can take years and involve three stages of human testing with up to 50,000 people across multiple countries taking part, human challenge trials can be done within a couple of months and involve far less participants. Logistically, what this looks like is that a couple of hundred volunteers, so that's significantly less than a phase three trial because there's greater scientific control in a challenge trial. A.B. Rorig is from One Day Sooner. He's also prepared to take the risk of testing a vaccine and being exposed to coronavirus if it means scientists can kill off COVID-19. Any decision that uh, involves uh, deliberately exposing healthy people to a disease for which there is no cure, um, you know, is a, an extremely serious one. And to uh, decide to do something like this, there must be very good reason. And there's a chance that uh, that young person or that participant could actually get very sick or even a very small chance they could die, uh, despite the fact that it's being conducted in a controlled environment. 
president of the Australian Medical Association, Dr Omar Khorshid, says with no specific treatment for COVID-19 currently available, challenge trials come with even more risk. The difference with uh, perhaps a, a normal phase three trial where a participant just gets a vaccine and we're looking at whether it works and how safe it is, the difference here is that you're actually getting exposed to a dangerous uh, virus and there's a level of risk there that is not there with other types of trial. They have to understand that they are incurring a great uh, degree of uh, an uncertain risk by taking part in a challenge trial, given that we don't fully know, for instance, the long-term neurological or pulmonary effects of the disease. Slowing transmission rates of coronavirus are challenging standard human trials of potential vaccines. Right now, you can only test vaccines in certain countries. Uh, because you need to have the virus circulating through the community to be able to know whether uh, the participants are being protected. If transmission rates continue to drop, we will need to conduct human challenge studies. We simply won't have any other option to gauge the efficacy of a vaccine. Human challenge trials have been used in the past, as early as 1796 with smallpox, then on studies involving influenza, dengue fever, malaria, cholera, typhoid fever and Zika virus. Oxford University in the UK is leading the race for a successful vaccine, having already entered phase three trials. The next step could well be a human challenge trial, reportedly as soon as October. We are in conversation with Oxford's Jenner Institute and actively collaborating with Oxford's Jenner Institute on preparation for a potential COVID-19 challenge trial. It's hoped a COVID-19 human challenge trial would speed up the approval of a vaccine by six months, which one day sooner says could save almost a quarter of a million lives. It is very important to prepare for challenge trials today in case they prove useful tomorrow. I want to try and help bring this vaccine forward by just one day. What a brave bunch, eh? Hey? At this stage, human challenge trials participants are not paid for taking part because of ethical reasons and they must not have any underlying health conditions. Elderly people are also ruled out due to any potential risks.